Welcome back to the Wizard Shop, and today we're going to tell you guys about a lot of different tips and things I've learned over the years. They're actually already on some of the videos I've already made. Here's a compilation of 12 of them to let you guys check out some of the things I've learned over the years that can help you guys out. Enjoy, guys. What was that? That's your new intro. That's our new intro? Yeah, isn't that great? It is. It sounds amazing. Actually, there's a story to that intro. Our new music was written by a fan from San Francisco, Clayton Cagle. He's the guitarist for the band Hatchet in the San Francisco area. He's worked with members of Megadeth, Anthrax, Alice Cooper, and a lot more. The guy is really good. Wow. He writes personalized songs of any genre, so if you have a special occasion coming up, the links will be in the description. Please give him a follow on Instagram and check out some of his music. Again, the link is in the description below. This guy is really, really good. Oh yeah, you're not going to hear it today, but there's new lift music as well. But there's no lift music to our compilation video for you today, but we hope you like it. The first tip, and I've ran into this problem. I have an apprentice, someone I've hired, or even helping a buddy out. We're pulling a transmission and there's some bolts on the bell housing they can't get to and they've got some bunch of weird universal joints and weird things and they're in there and they're ah, and they're knocking their hands and I just can't get to this bolt I don't know what we're gonna do and they're totally stumped the trick of the trade here is don't box yourself in don't get stuck in this little area right here and say the problem is here and the solution is here I just have to find it when the solution is not there. Let's take a few steps back. I'll show you the solution. Long 3 8 extensions. As many as you need. You can just keep going and keep going. I can reach out and touch Mrs. Wizard with it. The reality is, guys, don't box yourself in. From right here, I can get right onto a bolt that's giving me a bunch of trouble. As you can see, it's on the, on the bolt. And you put your ratchet or impact or whatever you want to use on the end, and now you're not fighting. You can just break the bolt loose. Break it loose, then you can put a power ratchet or an impact and zip the bolt out onto the next one. You can go all the way around the transmission that way. So like I said again, don't think that the problem lies here, the solution lies here. I have to be stuck right here. I can be way back, I could have enough extensions, I can be at the rear axle and get that bolt off. I mean, take a few steps back. Can I look back here? Can I get to it with an extension from way back here? Nine times out of a ten, you can, and it totally just solves the problem, and you're on, moving on down the road. So let's pretend that this vehicle is on the ground. It's already on the lift, so I could have easy access to show you the next tip. Tip number two is you're driving along, your engine dies, and you're just pretty darn sure it's your fuel pump. You turn the key on, not in the engine, you turn the key on, you should hear bzzz. If you have a friend under listen by the fuel tank can say, or even yourself, you could just listen real quick, turn the key on, not the engine on, just the key on. Bzzz. Now, if you're not hearing the bzzz noise, your fuel pump may not be working. It may have just died on you. And usually they always die right after a fill up, all the way full. So your mechanic has to take a fuel tank down full of gas. It always happens that way. There is a trick to get you home. And I usually don't show this trick because it kills my sails on a fuel pump. But I'm going to show it to you guys. You get a rubber mallet, have someone crank the motor, and while they're cranking, this is what you do. That's what you do. The reason why your fuel pump is not running is because the commutator has gotten to a bad spot with the brushes and it just stops. 
If you knock it a few times, it'll spin the stator just enough to spin it back up again and your car will start. But that will get you home if you're traveling and your fuel pump goes out. That right there, nine times out of 10, will get you home. If you get it running, do not turn off the vehicle. Just keep going. Fill it, if you gotta fill it with gas, they don't recommend it, but I say keep the vehicle running. It's better than having to bang on it again. If you're a wizard and you have a wizard staff and someone pisses you off, you just knock the hell out of them with it. No, I'm just kidding, guys. This down here is a starter off of an old diesel. I think it's off of the 350 diesel. Many times you go out to start your vehicle and you may have a failing starter and it just goes click or you can hear just a little bit of noise. The solenoid's not kicking the armature out or engaging the main motor. This is where people get on the internet and they see take a hammer and hit your starter. So they take some big, some, I don't know, channel wrench and they hit the actual motor this motor portion of it and they're just uh, that is complete that is not even where you're supposed to hit the starter in an, in an emergency situation and that's what this is you don't normally hit starters to get them to work but if you're stuck out in the cold and you know your starter has been failing for a while and you click it and click it and click it and click it and finally it, it starts if you get to the point where it just won't start anymore you can go out to the car I don't usually use metal because it dents it, but I guess if it's going bad, it doesn't matter. But you want to strike on the solenoid, the smaller cylinder shape, not the big bulk body of it. You know, that's, that's not the problem. The problem is in the little small cylinder. Have a buddy try to start it, or you, if you don't have a buddy, you can just go out and wrap it on the solenoid several times, and then go try to start it. Very likely it'll get you going, you can get home, you really need to get your starter replaced. Let's pretend we're putting a valve cover bolt on. It's kind of hard to get to. It's in between behind some harnesses or something and we're having trouble and this is theoretically the bolt. So we put the bolt in. We can't get there with our hands because of it's obstructed for whatever reason. So we try to put it in there like this and it just falls out. I say, well, how the, ah, oh, this thing keeps falling. And see, I've already dropped it. I'm going to get my little magnet and I'll grab it. Here's a magnet we have for sale on Amazon Affiliates page as well. The secret to that is a piece of paper. You make it about twice as the diameter of the, the head of the bolt. This is just some random paper I found. Fold it in half. Put it over your socket and push the bolt into there. It's not coming out. Then you have a nice sturdy solution to your problem. You can put the bolt down in the hole thread it on, and once it's seated, just wiggle it. You will have a piece of paper left over. Make sure you retrieve the paper, throw it away, and you solved your problem. So many of you run up against this before. This is a small screw, like a machine screw, that had a tiny little Allen bolt in the middle of it, how you would take it apart. And Ford seems to be really bad about this. Really big bolts and a tiny little Allen size to fit in there and take it apart. But many, many times, whether I was a, a supervisor at the shop I was at before or even in my shop now, that a mechanic that's working for me gets in there and rounds it out. And the next thing I see is they're over there with a drill on trying to drill it out in the interior of the car 
and almost to the point where they're slipping off the screw and going into the interior pieces or tearing up the leather or I'm just like stop don't go any further it's just this is so easy to fix this doesn't have to be hard what you do is you take a little Dremel with a cutting wheel on it most mechanics or even backyard mechanics do-it-yourself mechanics that I know have one of these even if it's a Harbor Freight one I don't care what brand it is but you put the cutting wheel tip on there and you cut a slot across the top. So you see I cut a slot across the top and you may need to get a larger screwdriver but the idea is that you get a screwdriver into the slot and then you can turn it. You can use a much larger, wider screwdriver, or if it's a small, small head screw, this would work perfectly. This one seems to be much larger, but it still would work. You can turn it really hard. So if you're in the interior of a car, this could also do damage to an interior, but it's a lot better to me just to be very careful and cut a little slot, and then you daintily put the thing away, and now you have a nice slot to fit a screwdriver in. This is an emergency procedure. We're not going to reuse this again. We're going to buy a new screw or whatever is supposedly supposed to go there and replace it. But this will allow you to get in there and get the thing loose, get it out, and it saves so much trouble. I have done this many, 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 many times with screws. And Car Wizard, you can do it on anything. It doesn't have to be in the car. It could be around the house. Yeah, you could do it anywhere, in your house, in your tool shed, your car, whatever. You've tested wiring, you've tested fuses, and all kind of other things. Why aren't my headlights working? Why aren't my fans coming on to cool my engine? Is it a relay? I've heard a few friends tell me it could be a relay, a bad relay. How do I know if it is or not? Let me show you how. You've seen these before in previous videos. And just like most of the tools we're going to use today, they're on my Amazon Affiliates page. I use a lot of tools off of there. That's why I put them there, because I actually used them in the shop. But these look like a relay, like your standard relay, but they're not. They have an on-off switch on them. This is on my Amazon Affiliates page in the Testers and Diagnostics section. A lot of people have had trouble finding these and that's where they're at. This relay right here runs the fans. And for whatever reason, let's pretend the fans aren't coming on. And you're like, well maybe it's a bad relay. Let's find out. Pull the relay out, set it aside, and we're going to insert our tester, a relay tester. These don't have all the pins of a standard relay. They only have the two power pins. This is what we're testing here. So insert the power pins. Now I control the fans, not the computer, not anything else. And I turn on the switch. There you go. If you know from testing that the computer is sending a signal to turn on the fans, you've tested the fans and know that they work but they still aren't coming on, it very likely could be a relay. And this one little tool can answer the question. Yes, it's a relay. I'll go buy a new relay now. Now that I know it does work. The wiring's good, the power's good, the fan's good, the ground's good. We all know that now because the fan turned on. These things have saved me probably literally thousands of hours over the last five or ten years of diagnosis. The Slim Wrenches. They're on my Amazon Affiliates page and I've mentioned these several times in videos in the past. And some people say, oh wizard, they're 180 bucks, I don't have that kind of money. I wouldn't run a shop at all without these wrenches. There's different brands, there's Monster or Mountain or Platinum, different ones, but these ones are Mountain. Anyways, they're on an Amazon Affiliates page. Check them out. I'm going to show you how awesome these are and how it can be instant solution to a serious problem. Right down here, we see a pulley, a black pulley with a silver aluminum colored bolt down there. And this has been the frequent bane of many trainees or mechanics that I've been in the process of training or friends and family members who are working down there and say, wizard, I can't get my ratchet down there. I've been fighting for an hour. 
There's just no way. I can't get down there. Can you help me? So that's where you take this wrench and you go down to the bolt, which is on the pulley. The length of this wrench allows you to slide right down in. This is really good for front wheel drive cars in this particular instance. Loosen the bolt until it's finger loose. Then you can take it out, take the pulley all the way out get your new pulley, get the bolt finger tight, reach in with your wrench, tighten it up, and tighten it to wizard foot-pounds. Here we go. And this is about the time that the person I'm helping goes, I've been fighting that thing for an hour. I had ratchets and extensions and all this stuff and cursing and mad. And I'm like, well, sorry. This right here is worth every penny. It's a time saver. I can get in, get out, move on to the next car, and my hands are not banged up like the guy I just helped with cuts and scrapes and blood coming down. And This is totally worth it. 180 bucks is too much, wizard. No, it's not. Not if you're doing this stuff every day. One more little hack that I have, and this is kind of a tech tip more than it is in a shop hack. Any more these black O-rings, these cheap basic rubber O-rings, how many times do you have to change those out because they've gotten hard as a rock and they're just leaking everywhere? If I take one of these off of a car, I don't even use these anymore, guys. I don't even use black O-rings anymore. I don't care if it's air conditioning. I don't care if it's hydraulic lines. I don't care what it is. I use air conditioning O-rings for everything. The material that these are made out of is called HNBR. It's green in color. The material that these are made out of also stands very cold, cold air conditioning temperatures. Also extremely hot air conditioning temperatures. And the oil that's inside of the system and the Freon. And these last years and years and years. I've, I've had these where I put them on an older vehicle and years later they're still leak free. They don't cost that much more. And they're such better material, way better. This is an upgrade, guys, a huge upgrade over these old black O-rings. This tip is O-rings, and this is O-rings in general, any O-rings. It could be a, a cam solenoid for variable valve timing. It could be AC compressor lines. It could be fuel injectors. It could be anything that has O-rings on an engine. This is an old compressor. I think it's off of... Tyler's old Porsche or something, it's no good anymore. Or we're not going to use it because it's old. There's an O-ring. Let's pretend we just put a brand new O-ring on, dry. No lubricant, just a dry rubber O-ring. And an inexperienced mechanic or a, or a shade tree mechanic says, yeah, I got a new compressor put on. I'm going to go ahead and put my lines on. And they're like, Dang, this thing won't go on there. What the heck's wrong with this thing? And then they make the biggest mistake they can make. I know what I'll do. I'll just put the bolt in there and get my tool and just force it on. There we go, got it. That is the worst thing you can do. That's absolute no-no in the mechanic world. Shame on you if you did that. Any O-ring that you ever put on an engine, if you can't put it on by hand, you've done something wrong. You don't draw O-rings on with the fastener. You put the right O-ring on. I use this X100 silicone lubricant. It's inert. It doesn't react with anything. Always put some sort of uh, a grease or a lubricant on your o-rings and I recommend the silicone because it's like I said it's inert. So now we've got the o-ring lubricated. Whenever you see whatever it is that you're installing, whether it's a cam solenoid or an injector or whatever it is, you insert until you feel the resistance of the o-ring. At this point it should never be resistance all the way down to its seats where it's bouncy like a rubber balloon or something where it's bouncy. You should feel a small pop like this. 
Did you hear that? That means it properly seated, it properly inserted into the port. Again, we'll go over that again. You should feel some springiness. If you can see there, it's springy. That means the con there's contact with the rubber O-ring into the port. And you lightly push. You don't ever bang, you don't do this. That's not how you put O-rings in. Bad. You put it in there where, where the O-ring seats and then you hear that? Perfect. When I hear that noise, I know I have perfect seal. I can continue on. I'm ready to move forward. We're going to use a power probe today. I'm going to show you some tricks you can do with that. This is a really super duper tool. Let's say you turn on the blower motor. Nothing happens. You say, well, I wonder if the blower motor is bad. You can take this tool and answer that question, yes or no, really, really fast. Let's hook it up. So you got to power up the power probe. So we'll hook positive and negative, and it'll beep at us. There we go. So on this power probe, we've hooked power and ground to it now. What it can do is it can show you there's good ground or good power by touching whatever terminal or connector you're working with. Or you can give it a power or ground like this. That's giving it a ground. And that's giving it power. I know that's kind of loud, but it's so you know when you're testing it what you're doing. And it comes with a little dongle. You can give something a ground or give it power through this. So you've tested relays and fuses and your blower motor is still not coming on. You say, okay, maybe the blower motor itself is dead. How do I know that? Easy. Go to the connector to the blower motor. You, I didn't push any buttons. That's making that noise because it's telling me. I found a circuit that's ground or whatever it could be. So I'll go ahead and put it in the socket and we'll give it a power and see if we hear the blower motor spin up. So yes, it came alive. It worked. So we know the blower motor is good. If you use this tool and hooked it into the main wires going to the blower motor and gave it power and it did nothing, then you know, okay, now it's time for a new blower motor. These are the kind of things in the shop that a customer brings me a car and I get my tools out, these tools I'm showing you, and, and it's like snapping fingers. It's like, and I've got answers, and now I can get an estimate together, and the customer's like, how did you figure that out so fast? It's just these tools I'm showing you. It's drilling out rivets. Specifically these, this is just a scrap piece of metal I'm using to show you guys how to do this. But you guys have all seen these rivets where you go to take a door panel off, especially on older 80s cars, and the window regulator is held in with all these little rivets. The biggest mistake I've seen rookie mechanics make is they take their drill, center it on the rivet, and go to town. And they end up walking it and scratching it and wallowing out the hole. That center hole right there, the center piece that's in the middle of this rivet, is steel. It's very hard steel, brittle. You're not going to drill through it with your drill. Especially when it's an aluminum soft rivet, the drill will choose the easier way out, which is the aluminum. It'll walk past the steel right into the door. I worked in the aircraft industry for several years for Cessna, building Citation 10s, the wing assemblies. I have drilled out thousands of rivets. What you do is you get a punch that's about the same size as the center hole. And you take a hammer, a metal hammer, and it's usually not very hard, but sometimes it can be kind of tough, but you have to punch the center out. Just like that. So here we go a second time. I'll show you. There's a little lock collar that you have to bust loose. That's what you're getting past to get the center core out. You just Sometimes you have to hit it pretty hard, but this one's are pretty easy. And it comes right out. It just looks like a little BB. That's the center core. That's steel, guys. That's not aluminum. And when you run your drill on that, it's going to walk past that and into 
It happens every time. The trick is to get the core out. Step number one, hammer the core out with a, with a punch. You don't move to step two until you can look through and you have a hollow rivet. There's nothing in the middle, it's just aluminum now. Then, you can take a drill bit, it's about the size of the hole that the core came out of, and we're not going to drill all the way through. This is where in the aircraft industry you, call, you, you blew out your hole. You took a 155 size hole and just oversized the crap out of it, and now it's useless. In rivets, when you're drilling out a rivet, you take the head portion off. About the depth of the head. And you can use leverage and just barely, barely break the head off. Just like this. You just tilt the drill just enough and the head comes off. The back end of the rivet will be in there very hard, very, and this is what you'll be left with. A hole with a rivet still in it with the head removed. Then you take a little bit bigger punch and punch that through with a hammer. Now you have a clean hole. So you've been having a ground issue with your vehicle, you've had it checked out by a shop or you have a buddy who's a mechanic and thinks maybe I've heard on these cars that there's a ground issue on these cars and you want to test, is that truly the problem with my car? There's grounds all over the body that connect to the engine and I'll show you one here in a minute. But just because the bolt is tight and everything looks good on the ground tab doesn't mean there's actually a good connection there, it could be rusted or corroded and the ECM or whatever's using that ground is not getting a good connection. It's caused all kind of haywire crazy problems. So you get a check engine light for codes that are phantom codes that aren't even really there. You get issues where lights are working sometimes and other times the lights aren't working. And you're like, what is going on here? We're going to do more than just take an ohm meter to the ground. We're going to load test the ground. We're going to force the ground to work really, really hard. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'll show you the tools I'm going to use. This is something I made for load testing grounds or powers too, but we're doing grounds today. It's just a light socket out of a Dodge Intrepid or something, and I soldered in wires. The bulb is going to make the ground work really hard. That's what we're doing here is load testing it. That looks a little Frankenstein-ish. Yeah, you can't buy this on my Amazon Affiliates page. But I don't even know that you can buy something like this. This is homemade, but you can make one very easy at home. We've got a couple of test leads. And that's about it. So we go to test this. This is a ground connection here. Like I mentioned, these are all over the place on cars, modern cars today. So we go to test the ground. We'll use the ground off the engine block. So you go to test it and it's like 0.2 ohm, 2.2 ohms. It's kind of a rusty connection anyway. But you say that the ground should be good. One ohms, zero ohms, whatever it is. So, well, the ground should be decent at least, and it may not be. So let's hook into the actual ground tab itself. So we got it hooked to the ground tab itself. So the first wire we just hooked up will hook to the light, which is ground here. Then the next one we're going to hook on the other side of the bulb to the battery positive. And it lights up, but watch when I move it around. You can see it gets kind of dim or it'll just die altogether. You say, well, I just tested that with the voltmeter. It's fine. No, it's not. Because as soon as we put a load, a really hard load on the connection, it gives up. It quits. This would tell me in this situation, I need to take that bolt off sand it and clean the connection and make sure the bolt's nice and tight. You'd be surprised how many problems I found solved by just cleaning and tightening a ground. And I'd say, well, how did you figure that was the problem, wizard? With a load test light bulb. So thanks for following along, guys. 
Hopefully that helps you out. You're working on your own cars. There are lots of tips that can save some time and a lot of stress. And like I said before and in previous other videos, there's so many videos in our bank. You guys really could, should go through and check them all out. If you're curious what kind of tools we use in the shop, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's so many more videos to come, just as many as there are currently that you can still watch. Thanks for watching. Thank you.